Hello everyone, I'm Kichigo and welcome back to Tales of Berseria. So in the last episode, we basically were still here. As you can see, we're still here. Um, we Lobby said saw a or since another earth pulse near here all we did was find a few items uh, accessories bosses um, and now we're back here again so I'm just gonna have to go back around and speak to everyone get items because now you just have to talk to the party Sorry, but we're not ready to sail yet. Give us just a bit more time. Mm -hmm. Oh, hey, you. Hey, you. Did we see her last time? Hmm. Maybe she still wasn't uh, someone we can speak to. Okay, so... I'm gonna save the party for last. Get this. Oh, hey, Velvet. Oops. You don't mind if I give Kudogane that orichalcum you fished up, do you? Doesn't matter to me. But do you really think he can make a weapon with that? I don't know. What does the expert think? Conventionally, no, it's impossible. But when has convention ever stopped a demon? I won't argue that. We're dealing with the hardest metal in existence. But I'm ready to cast aside all doubt, to focus everything on forging my greatest creation. If anybody can do it, it's you. Good luck, Kurogane. Yeah, best of luck. If you can make Rokuro stronger, you'll be helping me out too. Hmm. What Kurogane is, Ari Kalokum, Stormquill, so good. Shigure is sure to fall next time we cross swords. Okay, if you say so. Okay. You can give me a nickname if you want. I don't want to. Okay, so let's see. Where is... Things... Okay, I don't see any question mark, uh, exclamation points on any other area of the map, so I can just stay in this area. I saw the jug you fished up. It's assertive, but not ostentatious, and its luxurious curves are subtly seductive. A fine piece. Yeah, sure. Yep, the items are back. We got some fine sugar and wheat. Let's do something nice for once and bake Kamoana something tasty. There's a fine idea. I'll lend a hand. We can make enough for everyone. Okay, so there's no one else here. The oldest known oh. map of the world was made by... Wow! It took them decades! You always look so happy when you've got your nose in a book. What's so interesting about the one you've got there? It's a book about surveying. When I read it... I can imagine myself traveling afar and making maps of the world. It sounds like so much fun. I know just how you feel. I know Mogilu and the others don't understand. But I just can't help but feel excited when I think about us completing a map of the entire world. It's the thought of treasure that gets me more fired up. Obviously, there's treasure waiting to be unearthed too, but that's more of a bonus on the side. Crossing uncrossable oceans, going to lands where none have gone before. The voyage itself, the dance with death, these things hold value greater than that of any treasure. Ah, uh, adventure! Truly the romance of the quest we call life. Luffy said, you had a map, didn't you? The one you dropped when we first met? 
It's a world map I got when I was with the Abbey, but I only checked out the places really close by. I could hardly call it adventure. There's more to adventuring than visiting far-off lands and sailing stormy seas, you know. Adventures are about achieving your ambitions and leaping across the walls we've built to protect ourselves. No matter the danger that waits on the other side, there are no big or small adventures. Even if I only went to Helavis in the Fegal Ice Caps? Think of it like this. When you sneaked out of town without the Abbey noticing, when you walked the land and compared it to your map, how did that make you feel? It was scary, but fun. Exhilarating. Then it was an adventure. The map you made within yourself is a treasure that's only yours. Wow, my very own treasure. Well, that was, uh, I wasn't expecting that. And our expedition is back. Our scout ship has returned. Great, let's do this one Ron Getsy style, guys. Scout ship departing. Oh, so is he, he's the one doing it now? Because of the map thing? Anyway, I'm not done uh, picking up stuff, so I'll be right back. Alright, we're back. So let's speak to people. Have you been practicing your dove impression, Velvet? What? No. Now, now, a performer in Mogilu's menagerie has to be more diligent than that. What if we're stopped at a checkpoint and the guards ask you to perform a trick? If that happens, I'll show them my trick where I devour an entire witch faster than the blink of an eye. Oh, that would be a sight indeed. But seriously, if you ever want some magic tricks up your sleeve, let me know and I'll teach you some. Just 10,000 gold each. No. Steady practice is the key. If you don't put in real effort, you'll never be the real McCoy. You have to be you you have to perfect your art. Be a juggling or a vigilance. I gave him the therapy cat. Lavi said, I spy, I spy! Uh I can't come Awana. I've got stuff to I spy with my little eye. Something that starts with V. <sighs> okay, I'll try. Uh, is it velvet? <laughs> no, no fair. How'd you do it so fast? Man, it looks Come like on, your voice is I'm going sorry. out. You don't have to cry. <laughs> Poor V. Oh, I want to see if uh, his name actually is V now. Hmm. Girls can be hard to understand sometimes. Maybe. Hmm. What else do they have in common? What are you up to? I'm compiling everything we know about Earth Pulse points, starting with what the ones in Ward Forest and Polymedes have in common. I'll compare those points with the ones that didn't have any Therians. Then, I'll factor in everything I currently know about the Abbey's deployments. Once that's done, I'll match all that information against what we know about the locations Lafayette was able to sense. When that's completed, we should be able to tell which locations are more likely to house Aetherian. You're really going all out, aren't you? Must you sound so incredulous? If you're going to do something, then give it your all. There is no other way to live. R right. I'm counting on you then. I'm not doing this for you. This is for me and for Lafayette. Do you even understand why that boy's trying so hard? Yeah, I do. Hmm. If you understand, you need to show that you do. I can't emphasize emphasize the importance of that enough. Oh, he wants to talk to us again, or maybe we we should be talking to him again because of the whole thing that was on the uh, on the show. That lobby set is just plain mean. Who raised him anyway? <laughs> you know, boys, when they're around a lady, they can turn into right old meanies at times. Oh, you're so wise and mature, Prince Percival. I really admire you. Y you do? It's just something I read in a novel, actually. 
Maybe admire was too strong a word. Anyway. Hey, what do you say we track down another Therian? Sure. From what I can tell, the next closest Earth Pulse Point is near the center of Midgand. Midgand, huh? The capital's not far from there. I wonder how things are now that Griffin's gone, though. Only one way to find out. Maybe so, but Aizen's not here, you know. You're right. I haven't seen him in a while. We should probably ask Benwick where he wandered off to. Yeah. You just spoke to him. Wait, no yeah. we didn't. Uh, hold on. There's a letter here. On pretty cutesy stationery, too. Let's just have a quick look-see. As the cold turns bitter and the snow piles up on the mountains, I cannot help but think of you and hope you are in good cheer. As for myself, I am the same as ever, although I recently acquired a rare item that I shall be sending your- It's rude to read other people's letters, you know. Yeah, but how else are we supposed to find out whose it is? Does it say who the sender is? Uh, Uzfamewu Wexav. What? Who the hell is that? Probably someone on this island, if I had to guess. Hey! Anybody lose a letter? Do any of these folks look like the type to write a fancy letter? Point taken. It could be one of the pirates. Why or don't the we go prince? To the and ask around? Fine, just don't forget our mission. Or the prince? Search for the letter's owner. Huh, well, he's over there, so it's not his. Okay, uh, which floor do you want me to... Oh. Oh, it's just outside. Okay. Because I literally spoke to everyone already. Yep. Oh, he's talking to the turtles. No reply this time either. Eh, but she's doing okay. <gasps> I can say it's that much. That's Is good he to trying hear. to write to Etna? I can rest easy then. Now's about getting that pot wrapped. I've got this new sunflower print, huh? How's that sound? Hmm. Yeah, that one's cute enough. Let's go with that. Did... Did he just say cute? <clears throat> Help you with something? <laughs> Someone dropped this letter. Do you have any idea who it might? Oh! <laughs> you didn't read it, did you? Rokuro did. It's yours? We didn't read it. Much. You really didn't read it? N no, of course not. <coughs> Put this letter in with the package. Who's got it? When you ship with the Turtles Express, rest assured your mail is in good hands. If you're done here, we're ready to head out. He's right into Our destination Edna. is Midgand. Oh. Yeah, I'm all set. Was he sending a gift to someone? And with a letter, too. Gotta be a lady friend, that's for sure. Is his sister? Either way, that letter was really polite. And did you see that penmanship? Yeah, I didn't know old Reaps had it in him. I can hear you two, you know. Ah! <laughs> Yikes. Nickname for Makilu. What should we say from now on? Yeah. I noticed you've come up with your little name for the kid. You sure are the sentimental type, aren't you? Oh, calling him Fee doesn't cost me anything, and it's not like I gave it much thought. That may be the case, but no one else has taken even that token effort. And in doing so, I wonder if maybe you were trying to encourage him to be his own being. After all, one requires a name before he can consider his own identity. Having been given a name, he realizes he is his own entity, separate from others, and a certain formless essence comes to life inside him. And you're the one who set that process in motion for the kid. Whether you intended to or not, you changed him from a puppet into a living being. So what's your point? I've been with you since the start of this journey, haven't I? <laughs> Wouldn't kill you to give me a nickname, would it? I've never really thought of us as being that close. And besides, you just forced your way into the group. Come now! I know you've got a bigger heart than that! Surely you have it in you to give a nickname to a dear friend! Maggie. We're not dear friends. And even if we were, I'm not good at nicknames anyway. Please! I'm begging you! Annoyance. Okay then. 
Moggy. Oh, I was oh, right. Come on, that's so obvious. Can't you put some heart into it for your Lou, dear Lou. friend? Fine. Lou. Do I look like an old man <laughs> to you? You're not even trying. Okay then. Witchy Mick Witcherton. Interesting. Well, if I had to rank it against 1,000 other nicknames, I'd probably put it at number 1,011. A nickname needs to have charm. It needs to leave a lasting impression. Sure then. Hattie. Now you're just saying what you see! Book skirt. That's not any better either! <laughs> Ms. Creepy Eyes. That's just an insult! Look, no nicknames based on what you see, and especially no slandering! Lil Miss Witch who smiles around you but stabs you in the back when you're not looking. Hey, that's personal information! <laughs> Look, I told you. I'm not good at coming up with nicknames. Forget it! I should have known this wouldn't work! I mean, what? Octopus ink pasta? Aizen, what happened to those octopuses? Dial and Kurogane took them to the kitchen. They said they were going to make dinner for Kamoana. They're going to feed demons to her? Atheria needs malevolence to survive. That's why they carried them off alive. What do they plan on making? Octopus ink pasta with takoyaki and fried octopus on the side, and Helvetian octopus carpaccio. I want takoyaki. Do they have a takoyaki pan here at the prison? Kurogane hammered one out with some iron, along with a large pot for the pasta. <laughs> oh, really? Still looking like that? Takoyaki would hit the spot right about now, though. I know, wouldn't it? Octopus ink pasta, huh? Like squids, octopuses release ink as a defensive mechanism. But theirs is made of different stuff and is used in other ways. Squid ink is stickier and acts like a decoy. But octopus ink spreads out like a cloud of smoke. But squid ink has 30 times the savory flavor. So octopus ink isn't used in pasta all that often. Laffy told me the same thing. He said that's why octopus ink pasta isn't very good. Laffy said that? Yeah. So I ended up not making it for him. But I wonder... I guess it doesn't matter, since I can't taste it now. I'll taste it for you then. So make me some octopus ink pasta sometime. Do we All learn right? the recipe? Alright, and I'll be sure to make some that doesn't come from demons. Nope. Who was the letter for? Hey, who did Aizen send that letter and cooking pot to anyway? I don't want to think about it. That walloping still stings. You've got to be curious though, right? Maybe. It was serious stuff. Whoever it is must be important to him. A lover, maybe. I like how both just lover. like, it must be a lover. A child <laughs> wouldn't be happy with that cooking pot, and a man wouldn't want it wrapped up so pretty. A young woman with Aizen's tastes, then. He'd be bound to fall for a miraculous match like that, right? I don't know. I bet she's that girl with the yellow umbrella. You really have a thing for her, don't you? I, I do not. That's not what I mean. Then pray tell. What do you mean? Huh? Eavesdropping, Eleanor? How unseemingly rude of you. Besides, Luffy said is free to like whoever he chooses. You're one to talk about eavesdropping, Moggy Lou. Anyway, it's Not just Edna. that the he, sunflower she design you on the wrapping death. reminded me of her. Now that you mention it, but does it really matter? He has someone to write to in any case. True. I can't help but feel a bit envious. What a nice way of summing it up, Velvet. So you were eavesdropping too, then. Uh. Picky Eisen. Jeez. Say, what do you think about Eisen? Oh, so that's the kind of guy you're into, hmm? Huh. Not what I'd expect, but... No! I just feel there's something different about him. The way he picks presents, the objects that catch his eye. Oh, is that all? Boring. No kidding. All men have some kind of particular interest, big or small. I suppose that's true, but he seems a bit... shall we say, overly obsessive? Now that you mention it, he does have a tendency to ramble on about various topics. And it's not just the items he collects. There's more to it? Every weekend he eats curry for dinner, and every time we go into port, he docks at the third bollard. Come to think of it, I heard the galley crew complaining that he always needs his pasta cooked exactly the right way. And when he needs a new outfit, he always goes to the same tailor and returns with identical clothes and boots. It all has to be exactly the same size and in exactly the same color. Turtle says he's very nitpicky. 
Sounds like he's not so much picky as he is a pain in the ass. But I do see a different side of him now. I thought pirates were all rough and filthy, but it seems they can be quite meticulous. Not much of a reassessment. Hmm. Are we? Nope. Two-headed coin. It must not feel great only ever getting tails, I bet. Nah, I don't really mind that much. It's way too late for me to start letting that bother me. Yeah, but wouldn't it be nice to get heads at least once? Hell, I know I'd like to see that, and I bet Laffy said here does too. Yeah, I do. Right? That's why I've brought something a little special. Ta-da! What's so special about that coin? It looks identical to the one Aizen already has. The front side does, yes. But both sides of the coin are actually heads. I had Kurogane make it for me custom. If both sides are heads, then not even the Reaper's curse can stop it. Well, yeah, but that's cheating. What's the point in getting heads if it's rigged that way? It's not cheating. It's called effort and hard work. How? If you always work hard and never give up, you'll make your own way forward. All right, I'm in. I'll get that heads for you. Did someone? <laughs> what? That crow just flew off with the coin. Those birds are attracted to shiny objects, I suppose. Damn it! I can't even win against a crow. Don't sweat it. I figured something like this might happen, so I had a backup ready. Go on, give it a shot. You'll show that curse who's boss this time. All right, here goes. A wind? I don't believe it. Now Prince Percival's griffin's gone and eaten the other coin right out of the air. You guys you should be doing me? this inside. Not to worry. I've got a spare backup. It's time to put that curse on notice. Right. Here I go. What was that? You gotta be kidding me. Reaper's curse or not, does it really have to go this far over a damn coin? What? It's Crashed fine, it. really. I had a feeling it'd turn out like this. Well, I sure didn't. Yeah, me neither. What? What even happened? Dude, Aizen, jeez. No wonder you became a, a, a hellion. You have the worst look. May I ask you a question? What? You're an Earth Moloch, yes? Why live on the sea when your kind sinks in water? I live on the sea because I'm an Earth Moloch. I'd be curious to hear more. Eifried used to go on about how we should accept what we were born with. But one time he joked about the idea of a pirate who couldn't swim, and he laughed and laughed. I wanted to clobber him right then and there, but it wouldn't have changed the fact that I can't swim. I didn't want some predestined elemental affinity to control who I was. Instead, I underwent tough training to overcome it. Well, I guess that's one way to approach it. Did this training of yours bear any fruit? Well, as soon as I stepped into a river, a big flood brought down a landslide from the mountains and swallowed me up. Then, when I tried going into a lake, the seaweed suddenly multiplied and tangled around my body, nearly drowning me. And then finally, when I tried jumping into the ocean, a huge whirlpool formed with me at its very center. Huh. <sighs> the wow. Reaper's okay. Curse at play? As far as I'm concerned, my Earth Affinity and my Reaper's Curse aren't much different, in that they've both shackled me since I came into being. This is about pushing and challenging the constraints I was born with. Huh. <sighs> so, did you eventually learn how to swim? Pretty much, yeah. As long as I never let go of my portable life preserver. Oh. <laughs> well, I mean, like, if freaking tidal waves and whirlpools form around you, I guess uh, you wouldn't go anywhere without something. Okay. No exclamation points. We have looked everywhere. Okay. I hey, forgot to Eisen? save. Is there a... Uh... Anything we can do about the Prince's Hawk? 
Griffin, I mean. Every day, it goes out on these hunts or whatever, and brings back the weirdest stuff. It's making a real mess out of the deck. Hawks hunt. What's the big deal? Well, yeah. At first it was bringing back good stuff like seaweed and fish, things we could cook with. Sure, I was glad for a while. But then it started to escalate. Now we're talking 150 kilo amber cans and 350 kilo killer swordfish that it's catching. That's not a bad thing, is it? It just means more to eat. It is when they're being dropped from the sky onto the deck. Especially those killer swordfish and razor sharp bills. What if somebody gets run through by one? Can't you just warn the prince that his bird needs to be more careful? Yeah, we could, but he looks so happy watching his hawk, I hate to spoil it for him. Yeah, the prince looks so happy whenever Griffin is flying free. He kept grinning and asking Grocky all nice like if he wanted to fly some more. Grocky? That's what Kamawana kept calling Griffin. She says she came up with it by combining Griffin and Hawk. <sighs> This is probably the first time in the prince's life that he's tasted any freedom. His whole life he's only done what duty dictated of him. Letting Griffin fly was his first free act. To the prince, Grocky is an extension of who he is. So what are we going to do? Nothing, really. It's not like it really hurt anybody. But it's punctured some major holes on the deck! I'm sure even the prince knows when to rein it in. Let him have a little fun. He deserves it. I don't know about all that. I'd say the prince is letting his newfound freedom get the better of him. Hey, I was just up on deck and it looks like Griffin's caught an elephant tuna this time. An elephant tuna? That's the really big tuna that can swallow a killer whale whole, right? That almost sounds like a demon to me. Yep, huge fish, gills like elephant ears. I saw it myself. From the looks of it, I wouldn't be surprised if it was a demon. It's crazy valuable. On a good day, it can fetch 20 million gold on the market. But there's something ominous about seeing it hovering in the air above the ship. 20 million gold? I take back everything I said. The Prince and Griffin can do whatever they want. Did she say above the ship? Oh, hell. Benwick, we need to stop Prince Percival. Aye, aye, sir. Hey, don't drop that on the deck! Are you listening to me? That's not more like a gun shot, but... Oh, I thought their ship was ruined, but I guess not. I just wanted to save. Because I didn't save before. This is the first time that we've been in the same, like, port area for like the longest so I wonder if the skipper's let letter is a forbidden subject among the crew best to leave it alone and with that warning out of the way we're ready to set sail okay so now we can go oh wait so yeah so that's Cretacean We need... Oh, you saw... Yeah, we still can't go there. Uh, we're supposed to be going to Midgan, right? Wait. Investigate the point of... Okay. It must be Park Zixon again, right? And we still can't go to the ice caps. So let's do the this one since it's closest. Cretacean Quarter. So let's look around. Okay, so no treasure chest here. And then we'll change our... Well, at least mine. My arts around. Okay. 
Oh, expedition is back. Our scout ship has returned. So wait, let me see. How much mystery meat do we need? Okay. Scout ship departing. Oh. A cast treasure box. Treasure chest. Gain a title. Marathoner? Marathoner? A title for one who has traveled far and wide. Don't let dead ends stop you. Oh. Oh. There's a few items on... On here that we've mastered. Alright, because I didn't change them. Uh, let's see here. Okay. 150. Okay, so that's it. what I wanted. Let's see, Kardashian, so we got this one. And this one. So this, those two. It leveled up. Okay. Actually, since we're about to go against Cretaceans, let me see if I have any. Titles that are trying against Cretaceans. Which doesn't look like it. Does anyone have Cretaceans? Um, 
Uh, they might have some that are armored. So let me go up to the one that had armored. Mm, I don't think it would be Beast and Kratashian. I don't think so. Let's do the fiends, maybe? Demon humans. Um, so with that, let me switch out. You want me in? Yeah. Fine by me. Oh, there can't go. a witch get a little downtime? You have downtime, yes. Uh, anything up here? Nope. So good. Quick save. And go ahead and take this on. We can do this. Ow. I'm slow. Um, yeah, sort of. 
Huh. Inexhaustible pendant. Oh, I got some new stuff though. So, inexhaustible pendant. A pendant that shows his strength in times of peril. Amber spear. A spear that uses amber as a mana catalyst. Wait, that's our first time getting an amber spear? Huh. Interesting. Avengers Ventite. Allows the use of break souls and counter attacks on normal difficulty or higher. Okay. So is she. Well, she's not ready for it. Yeah, it's all the way down there. Here. Okay. Alright, time to go. That probably gonna be. Um. Gonna set sail, go to where the plot is, because this was the only place we could go. Because we can't do anything with that. Because we're not able to go to Vigil Ice Caps. So, we have to go to Midgand. Midgand, I think, is Renied, right? No, this is Westgan. So Midgan is this. Yeah, yeah, that one. Okay. So that's Port Zex then. Gotcha. Uh, Cause we will go to Renid if we were going to that boy, but we're not able to. Okay. Cutscene. The boss has given me a message for you. Oh, hey. Avalanche? Says there's some sort of nasty demon running around in the Aldina Plains, to the east of Logris. She thought it might be the one you're looking for. Wasn't the Eastern Highway closed off from Logris? That was only temporary. It's back open now. Oh, cool. If you follow the road, you'll reach Stonebury Village. There you'll find one of ours who actually saw the demon. You want to know more? That'd be a good place to start. Got it. Hey, that's the same direction I sense. Give the Tabitha our thanks. Yeah, don't be... Yeah, don't talk too loud. Looking more and more like we're on the right track. We ought to go check out that Bloodwing story. Then let's start by going to Stonebury. Hey, Aizen, did I say something wrong back there? No. I just didn't think we needed to give the Bloodwings any information for free. Huh? He means the Earth Pulse points, kid. We're the only ones who know about them. But aren't we on the same side as the Bloodwings? No. We're not enemies with them. But I wouldn't go so far as to call them our friends either. That's just how it goes in the underworld. Things can change at the drop of a hat. A poison hat. But how are they supposed to trust us if we don't show them trust and kind? That messenger knew our faces, even though we'd never met. He was here waiting for us, even though we hadn't told anyone where we were going. You're right! We hardly know the first thing about them, and yet they seem to know every move we make. They could easily sell us out if it struck their fancy. They'll work with us as long as we're a useful ally in their resistance against the Abbey. But the more tricks we can keep up our sleeve, the better. We've got each other's back, but only as long as we hold a knife up our sleeve. That's what counts as trust in the Underworld. That sounds terrible, but at least you can trust that Tabitha's cooking will be tasty. <laughs> 
Can't uh. argue that. Eastern mid again. This is everyone's first time to Stonebury, right? Why was it blocked off? Demons? No, there was a great tornado on the Aldina Plains that swallowed up a whole merchant caravan. Hundreds gone in an instant. The cooling of the climate is causing bouts of odd weather. Thunderstorms, heavy downpours and the like. Correct. The Abbey is keeping a tight guard on traffic through the affected areas. If it's open now, that must mean the tornado is gone. I wonder what sort of place it is. It's quite lovely. In the vast forest to the east, you can find gemstones, and it's teeming with rare plants and insects. The locals trade only as much meat and hides as they need, and they live peaceful, quiet lives. You sure know a lot about this place. It's where the Norman he first fell in love with grew up. Yes! Please don't embarrass me. Though we are apart from each other now, our hearts are still as one. Immediately after you and I made our pact and set off, she fell in love with some macho Norman and moved away. What? Why haven't I heard about this? How long have you known? Oh, I don't know. Maybe I found out during my long search for you. Or maybe it was right after we left. I remember leaving something in the village and going back to... Oh, well, not like it matters. It does matter! There's no sense in crying over a fickle girl. Come, Stonebury awaits. <laughs> okay. So... Yeah, we're over an hour now, so I think... Um, and I probably won't be able to cut out too much of that. Um, so yeah, we will set out... Well, talk to everyone here. And then set out. So which way? Oh, which way does it want us to go? So we're here. Okay, so we will have to go to there. Whatever this is. Gail's late road. Okay. And then go on from there. Gotcha. Hmm. Alright. Yep, go save. Actually, hold on. Hold, hold it. Hold it. Do you have any... Excellent time, man. I just got a new request. So we got Rainbow Rock. Rock. He's on a dead... The end of planes, which is where we're going. King Peacock. And then Serial Killer Tree. Dryad. Divine He Forest, which we have not been to. So these are both areas that we have not been. That we're probably going to pass through on the way. Okay. Thank you. Now it's saving. Um, so with that, if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, comment, subscribe, whatever you want to do. Enjoy the rest of your day or your night. And this is Kijiko signing out. Goodbye, everyone.